Today's project is super cool. We're going to take earth, air, fire, water, animal, vegetable, and mineral, build a kiln out of straw and clay, burn some lime, slake it, and then we'll have something really useful. You're like, lime? Who needs it? No. Lime is cooler than you think it is. Lime is the main ingredient in cement. No lime, no cement. And aside from its use in cement, it's also used in building. So you can mix it with sand and use it as mortar to stick bricks and rocks together or make plaster to smear on walls. Lime is used in smelting and refining metals. It's used to process corn to make tortillas, hominy, and grits. That means tortilla chips. It's used to remove the hair and cleanse the fiber of skins to tan into leather. And it just shows up over and over and over again because it's so useful. So I'm gonna rip through the lime cycle here and then we're gonna get busy. The lime cycle starts here with calcium carbonate. Shells, limestone, marble, chalk, pretty much all the same thing. To calcium carbonate, we add fire. When we cook these, we drive off the carbon and we end up with this, quick lime or calcium oxide. Calcium oxide is highly unstable. This is the most dangerous reactive form of lime. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna add water and we're gonna turn it into this. This is slaked lime or hydrated lime and in this case, it's lime putty. Hydrated lime is the most useful form of lime, and that's what's used for all the stuff I just mentioned. It's very alkaline, which gives it a special chemical property we can use for things like repairing hides and processing corn, but also we can use it for building. So if we mix this with sand, say, and smear it on a wall and leave it exposed to the air, as the water leaves and the air comes in, it absorbs carbon and it turns back into this. That's why they call it the lime cycle. So you could think of this as having like liquid rocks. Mix it with sand and then you can smear your rocks in any shape you want and let it dry and it turns back into a hard substance. And here's something else cool. This is money in the bank. Not only can we store this in water and keep it indefinitely, but it actually improves with age. So we are going to take this, we're gonna add fire, we're gonna make that, we're gonna add water, we're gonna make this, and then we can store that and use it for all kinds of cool stuff whenever we want and that's money in the bank and it's gonna be fun and cool and it's gonna look cool and it's gonna be fun and it's gonna be cool and fun and it's gonna look cool so let's lime up it's time to lime up thick side. Uh, thicker than syrup. Thick enough to really coat these this grass really well and leave a lot of clay sticking to the grass. The kiln's actually going to be kind of maybe like half clay and half grass. Now it's okay if there's grit in here or like in here those little bits of undissolved clay. That's totally fine as long as the consistency feels right. So yeah, let's go get some grass. All right, I got a pretty hefty pile of grass here and it did not take that long. So this stuff is flexible. I can easily build it into a circle. It still holds a lot of air in the hollow stems and it's easy to gather. Okay, so I'm gonna build the kiln right here on this flat piece of ground, but I need some air vents in the bottom, half round shaped air vents so the air can come into the kiln at the bottom and travel up. I have this curled up piece of bark. I'm just gonna make little half dome pieces and I'll build the kiln around that and by the time these dry up and burn away, the kiln will be dry enough that the holes won't collapse. I put long pieces up and over these arches because I want to make sure they're strong. So I'm not wringing out any of the extra clay. I'm 
make sure it stays wide enough and doesn't start getting too narrow. I'm going to start building out very, very slightly. Right here we have some limestone that my friend brought over and I'm going to bust a couple pieces of this up and throw it in. I don't have a lot of experience burning limestone, we'll see how it goes. So we're down to very few coals and you can see the bottom of the kiln there is actually dry on the inside and the clay is fired. Well it's been raining like crazy here. The first two burns I did in this kiln were experiments to see if I could light from the top. More on that later, but this is the third burn. I have a time lapse of loading this kiln, which I'll cut in after this brief discussion. What we're doing to these shells is called calcining. When the shell is heated to a certain temperature, it drives off the carbon and leaves calcium oxide instead of calcium carbonate. So there's two factors that we're looking at here. One is temperature and the other is dwell time. This is really simple. If you don't get it hot enough, it doesn't work. And if it doesn't stay hot long enough, then the carbon is not driven off. This is about as big a piece as I would put in there. As you scale the kilns up, you can put bigger and bigger pieces in. I also have a bunch of small wood in there to provide a fast burning fuel source that's going to bring everything up to temperature quickly, but it won't last. This gets everything going and keeps it going, and this gives you the dwell time to make sure that your shells are calcined through all the way. I also put in some bark. Uh, this is fir bark. It's probably 60 years old. Uh, it's still super solid and heavy and just full of good fuel value. I usually just go by feel in terms of mixing the fuel and the shells. Um, I think the most you're going to get away with is about one third shells, but that's probably pushing it. I would start with fewer shells, maybe like one quarter to one fifth shells to wood. The stuff is stacked in layers. On the bottom, there's a carefully laid thing with a lot of small twigs to catch the fire and spread it really quickly when I put some fire underneath here through one of these vent holes. A good size layer of wood in the bottom, maybe up to like here then a layer of shells, more wood, shells. Now when this burns down and drops, it'll actually end up only about this full. So we can put more layers of shells in there as it burns down. You don't have to be super uptight about it, but make sure that there's space between most of the fuel and they're not packed together like this. If you do that, then air can't get through and the whole fire is gonna be sluggish. So this has been sitting for a couple days now while it was raining. Uh, if the kiln is empty, you can just set this tin on top and put some bricks on it and that's totally adequate. Well, this wood is gonna be pretty damp in there. I made a bunch of these fuzz sticks like this and I have some pine pitch. Once I get this going and shove it under one of those vent holes, I should get it going pretty quick. So let's light it up. See, I have a bunch of fine material in the middle. I have kind of a crisscross thing going. Then I have some big pieces of bark around the edge. So now I'm gonna add some more larger wood and some more small wood. And once I have a pretty good pile in there, I mean, I want it quite a bit on the bottom layer. Then I can add my first layer of shells, more wood, shells, more wood, and then we'll get going. As you can see, lighting from the bottom produces a huge quantity of smoke. Now a lot of this is actually steam, so it looks worse than it is, but it's still pretty bad.
I've tried lighting from the top and that works in other systems, but for this system it just doesn't seem to work because the layers of shells keep the fire from steadily burning down and staying really hot. Any minute this is about to go whoosh and all these gases right here will start to burn off. Yeah! Well, this is burning nice and hot. We're ready for another layer of shells. You can pretty much keep adding shells and wood as long as there's room and everything's still burning nice and hot. But I'm just going to do one more layer so I can wrap this video up. And we're going to let that burn down until it's cool and then sort it out and slake the shells. So the kiln is cool enough to start unloading now. What we're going to do is we're going to take the shells out, kind of sift off stuff we don't want, and sort out any underburned shells. Beautiful. So whether they're stones or shells, the burnt pieces of lime are called lime shells. The process is called slaking, as in like slaking your thirst, and these things are voraciously thirsty for water. They'll actually absorb water out of the atmosphere, so you don't want to put off slaking. If you have to put off slaking, at least store them in a plastic bag or something. This batch burned really well. There's very few reject shells. In fact, this is all of the reject shells right here. That's not to say that everything in here is completely well burned, but those are the only obvious ones. You can do this in a lot of different containers. Like, you can take any kind of tall, thin metal container, for instance, and go ahead and, and burn lime in it but you're going to get a pretty high rate, maybe 15% or more, of underburned shells. That's because of the lack of insulation and mass. Any shell that's right near the wall or touching the metal isn't going to calcine all the way, because the metal is constantly conducting heat away and just radiating it into the outside air. With some insulation, that doesn't happen, and the inside walls of the kiln get so hot that the shell touching them is just at the temperature of the rest of the kiln. A well-burned shell will be lightweight, chalky, pure white, and when you break it open, it's white all the way through. Underburned shells will have this grayish cast to them, and when you break them open, the center will have either black lines or black core. You'll also get shells that are in between that look okay on the outside, but when you break them, they're gray or black on the inside. That's okay. You don't have to sort them too carefully because any parts that are underburned simply won't break apart when you slake them, and then you can sieve them out through a screen later. I also threw in some pieces of limestone. I've only burned a few pieces of this limestone in the past. It seemed to slake really well, so we'll see how it goes. So when people think of lime as being dangerous, they're really thinking of quick lime, and it is dangerous because it's so reactive and volatile. Once it's slaked, it's much safer. But in this form, it can only be so dangerous to us. Now imagine if this was powdered, and say you got a bunch of the powder in your eye, it would, it would be in a form that could react very quickly, so that would be really bad news. When we add water to this, it's literally going to boil, so it's going to be very hot. You don't want to do a face plan in here, you don't want your kids to do a face plan in here, you don't want your dog to come and stick its nose in there. So yeah, take precautions. It is dangerous. Don't get it in your eyes. But people have been tanning hides, plastering walls, making tortillas without hazmat suits for a really long time. Take due precautions, respect the material, and everything will be fine. Big lime is not some scary toxic chemical that you need to be deathly afraid of. Just keep your kids away from it and stupid drunk people. So for whatever reason, shells are different than stone. I'm not sure why, but it's like the structure of shells is different or something, and they re usually require hot water to get them going. Once it heats up, the reaction will go really quickly. Just keep adding just enough water to keep the reaction going. Don't drown it right away. Just put in enough to get it started, and the shells are going to absorb the water. As they absorb it, they'll need more, so keep adding more hot water. And then once it gets really going and boiling, you could add small amounts of cold water. Just keep enough so that it doesn't end up dry. You want it to end up as a putty. The other way to slake is to add small amounts of water until this falls into a powder. And that's the stuff you can buy in the store. Dry, lime hydrate, hydrated lime, type S lime, builder's lime, all the same thing. Shells are more hesitant to slake, so that doesn't always work. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you can leave a shell out and it'll disintegrate into powder. Sometimes it'll just sit there and it'll never really slake. Stone slakes much more easily, so if you just spritz it with water, it'll just fall into a powder eventually. Or you can keep adding water and turn it into lime putty. There are very few places where you'd actually want to or need to use that dry lime hydrate powder. Because lime putty is completely saturated and protected by a layer of water and storage, it can't absorb any carbon. The dry lime hydrate is exposed to the atmosphere, it can absorb carbon, and so it's partly carbonated. So basically, unless you need a dry product that's easy to transport and store, lime putty is better.
So once the reaction is mostly over, just make sure it has enough water that any little remaining pieces will finish slaking. Then you can just leave it for a little while to finish reacting, you know, maybe 20 minutes or so. So here's the dry lime hydrate. That's how you want it there. A few pieces are unfinished. I don't really, I don't have enough experience to know how to manage this properly to get it all in a fine powder. Now that this is slaked out all the way, we're just gonna add enough water to make it into what's called milk of lime. Run it through a screen to sift out all the unburned shells and it's ready to store. This is starting to settle already. The lime's gonna settle to the bottom and make a nice firm putty. And you want that protective coat of water on the top. The water is called lime water and you'll find old technical recipes that call for lime water. So keep that water on there. Don't let it dry out. If it dries out, it'll turn back into calcium carbonate and you'll have to start all over again. I would call this a successful project. The kiln works great. Not only did it work well, but it still looks really good. It looks like it's not eroding very fast, not as fast as the other ones I've built like this. Maybe I used more clay, I'm not really sure. But maybe it's not as temporary as I thought. I think there's a lot of possibility here and probably a lot of other uses for this system of building. It's just super fast. You don't really need anything. You could do the thing with sticks and rocks. It would just take you longer. Things like maybe uh, smelting metals and firing pottery. We actually tried to smelt metal in one of these one time. And I think the kiln was, was up to the task, although it didn't work for other reasons. And it was really fun. Uh, of course, the, I have to clean up now and the rest of my life has sort of fallen apart. Like you, you don't want to see the state of my kitchen. And stay tuned for future projects using this line, like tanning hides, probably making some soap, maybe processing corn, I don't even know what. Stuff. Cool stuff. And if you're really interested in lime, pick up this book, Building with Lime. It's excellent. I think everyone should buy less stuff, but everyone should buy more good books. If you do buy it, please use my Amazon link down there because it'll make like 50 cents or something and I'll be happy. So happy. Okay, well, I think that's it.